Welcome back to the Passive Rotary Retirement Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Jarrett. Today, we are joined by Andrew McDaniels. Andrew has over a decade experience in financial markets, is an Australian school economist, contrarian, and value investor. Andrew, welcome to the show. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Great name, man. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great to have you on. So, uh, Yeah, I, it's a pleasure. I, honestly, I've been looking forward to it for a while. Mm -hmm. Same. So, hey, you're, <laughs> uh, great. you're overseas now, but also... Yeah, man. Yeah, so what's, what's yeah, up? So I, yeah, I, uh, I left the U.S. two years ago, and uh, I'm now on my seventh country in two years. Um packing my shit up and uh, I'm heading to uh, another country next month. I'm going to uh, Bulgaria. Um, it's one of the cheapest countries to live in Europe. And I picked that for a reason because um, we need to batten down the hatches for the next little while. And uh, so, you know, you can live there extremely cheap. Like uh, we, I, like I was telling you before, um, you can get a two bedroom for three or $400 a month in Bulgaria and the tax rate in Bulgaria is 10%. Really? Which, yeah, it's it's good for the personal side and the business side. Yeah. I'm only going to be there for a little while. Um, and then I, I'm going to spend uh, Christmas in Italy with my family. Um, uh, I lived in Italy as a kid, so I can't wait to go and show my kids <laughs> where I grew up. <laughs> That's awesome. Never been to Italy. I've always wanted to go, but yeah, I haven't, haven't gone there yet. But it looks beautiful. That's great, man. I mean, uh, I love to, I mean, honestly... I just, uh, you know, I've been self-employed since I was 24. I'm 37 now. Um, I've designed the way I want to live uh, on purpose. Yep. A lot of people say, I wish, I wish, I wish. Oh, I wish I could do that. Instead of wishing, I decided, okay, two years ago, I said, okay, I'm going to pack my shit and go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have two small children. I've got a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. And it's totally... We, we homeschool, so it's totally doable. Yep. So for people out there that are interested in uh, being, a, we call them world schooling, <laughs> you can totally <laughs> take your kids around the world and they'll have such a rich experience and it's a lot of fun. I mean, the kids love it. The only downside is they wish, they say, daddy, we want to stay longer so we can make uh, keep our friends. That's the only downside. <laughs> right. <Whether. laughs> But, you know, I can run my business anywhere from uh, as long as I have a uh, internet connection, uh, my phone and my laptop. Yep. Same here. I love it. You know, me and uh, traveling with a buddy of mine a lot more lately. We did like two weeks over in Europe and then we just uh, trips to Columbia came down in price. So we're like, hey, you want to go to Columbia this week? So four to eight hours before we left, we just booked a flight, went down for the weekend to it around and came back, you know, it's awesome. That's great. Oh, yeah. It's, it, you know, that's what financial freedom lets you do and being your own boss lets you do that also. So right. you can't do this if you're working nine to five and uh, it, it's such a different life experience when you are able to, um, to create, you know, like cash flow and a business that runs, even if you're not uh, there every single day. Um, like, so for, for me, like my main business is real estate, but also I invest uh, any excess savings I put into mining stocks, I put into uh, uh, physical metals. And uh, so really what I'm doing, I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, stuck in one location. I'm not a tree, <laughs> you right. know, I can get up and go. Yeah. If, 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 uh, if the politics in one country pisses me off, I can, I can leave and go. <laughs> exactly. Or if something happens, I can get, get up and go. I'm not stuck. And um, countries that uh, they treat tourists better than citizens. So it's better to be a tourist than a citizen. Mm -hmm. um, and I can fly under the radar and be left alone. That's yeah. what I like. Yeah, which is nice. And you can't beat the pricing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's for sure. Can't beat it. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I, I I feel sorry for people that are paying two grand, three grand for rent or, you know, a mortgage payment. It's just, why? It's just, you know, a lot of people think, oh, the U.S. is the greatest country on earth. Yeah, maybe for capitalism or crony capitalism. <laughs> but, you know, expand your horizon and, um, 
you know, take take a trip and and go to Mexico, go to the Cayman Islands, go to the Bahamas, go to go see these places in person and and see um, if it's possible to live outside the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's eye opening for sure. I mean, traveling it just shows you so much that you don't really know. You know, living in the U.S. for so long, kind of see a lot That's of cool. different things. So absolutely, man. And so it's exciting time to be in the. Um, you know, to live because there's so much stuff happening in the economy and real estate. Yep. I mean, we could talk about, we could, I mean, I could talk an hour just on a few of those topics. So exactly. uh, yeah, it's yeah. just so interesting time to be in uh, as far as, you know, I think, you know, in the next six months to a year, it's going to be really, really tricky <laughs> for the U S economy. I think that uh, real estate in particular is going to get whacked in, in addition to risk assets. And what I mean by risk assets is stuff like Bitcoin. Like people think Bitcoin is like, uh, you know, digital gold. I disagree. Yeah. People can disagree with me on that. Um, it's, I think it's digital fiat. Um, it's backed by nothing. And really the only use is really a method of exchange. And uh, if you need it in a, on the internet goes down, how are you going to, how are you going to, buy food for your family. That's what physical gold's for. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to do that with, uh, and people don't, a lot of people don't accept Bitcoin. So Mm -hmm. for me, it's like, uh, it's a risk asset. Uh, Tech stocks are risk assets. Um, NFTs, (laughs) which a lot went to zero. (laughs) Trump ones, which for some reason, people love Trump NFTs, which I don't, you know, whatever. uh, and so a lot of those, uh, a lot of risk assets are going to get whacked in the next downturn. And it's, it's really because, uh, the last 10 years, really, it's been more than that. It's been 12 years. It's been basically the federal reserve pumping the whole economy full of liquidity from mm-hmm. money printing and buying government bonds and buying mortgage-backed securities. The government, basically, if you take away the Fed's balance sheet from the economy, it's basically there's been zero growth since 2008. Right. Which is scary. (laughs) It's really scary. What people think are capital gains is really just Fed-induced. The Fed has pushed all assets up. And a lot of people have actually had higher tax, they pushed people into higher tax brackets because of inflation what i've seen is asset prices rising not wages or income right is that kind of what you've been seeing yeah yeah that, there's no that people are not keeping up with um i mean people are probably there's a two two to three percent wage growth and the real inflation is nowhere near what they're telling it is <laughs> yeah you know the the, the the inflation rate let's say a year ago was probably 10 to 15 percent now it's probably like, you know, anywhere from seven to to ten. You know, I, it's hard to it's hard to judge because there's different calculations, but it's nowhere near. And so people are still struggling, and that's what happens if you're live if you're working a job, you're getting hosed the most because you've got a fixed income. Yep. With High everything price. rising, and guess what? If there's a market crash, only risk assets are going to go down. Pricing like food and clothing and things like that, Mm -hmm. that inflation is sticky. So that doesn't go away. That's going to be there because the the money is already in circulation. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of, I had an argument with somebody earlier that they said, if there's a market crash, we're going to go into deflation and include like, everything's going to be cheaper. Now, some stuff will be cheaper, but not everything because that money, there's still people who save it. There's still people that, you know, uh, invest it. Like, not everybody's going to lose, uh, you know, money in a crash. Some people are going to make money. So, uh, you know, um, a lot of businesses right now are in trouble. I've seen that the bankruptcies are up. Uh, mm-hmm. Delinquencies are up. It's, it's it, debt is way up. Debt is all high, all-time highs. It's It doesn't look pretty, man. But <laughs> there's a good news. <laughs> you can make money and protect yourself in the downturn. And how can you do that? Physical metals, gold, silver, platinum, 
three things, gold, silver, platinum. I prefer the coins. Um, I prefer, uh, I like uh, Canadian maple leaf coins in gold and silver and platinum um, and mining stocks. Like that is what I'm solely focused on. I'm, I'm not buying multifamily. I'm not buying self-storage, not buying anything, not even single family right now. Yeah. Um, even though my background is hard money lending, um, our, our money lending business, we went from $80 million loaned out two years ago to less than 30 million today. Oh, wow. So we, our lending business is yeah. because there's not, the interest rates are so high that investors are struggling to find good deals. And mm -hmm. people don't want to sell their homes because they locked in super low mortgage rates. Right. So there's a there's a shortage of good deals, mm -hmm. as as you probably feel yourself, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely. Nothing's cash. So what do you put your money in? What do you put your money in when there when there's no deals? You sit it in a in a savings account, making <laughs> two to four <laughs> percent. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> you put it to work. You find what asset class is beating up the most. And mining stocks are at 40 to 50 year lows mm -hmm. and not get a better opportunity, a risk to reward than mining stocks, gold, silver, uranium, copper. Um, I did like lithium, but I don't like lithium anymore. Um, nickel, cobalt. There's a lot of metals that uh, there's, there's so many metals that have a bullish uh, story to them. Even in the, even if there's a crash, copper will still do well, because a lot of people think copper will do bad in a crash because it's a metal that is needed to build things, right? Right. Well, there's so much demand for windmills and for upgrading electro, you know, the electrical grids and new construction in Saudi Arabia, China. The 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 supply of copper is at depletion levels. Meaning it's so low that even if there is a crash in the market, it's not going to affect the price of copper because the price of copper is supply and demand. When the supply is low and demand is high, the price goes up. But if the, 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 the demand comes down, right, mm -hmm. just a little, the price is not going to be that affected that much, I don't think. Um, but guess what? If the supply goes down lower because people are buying at cheaper prices, right. the price has to go back up because there's no supply. And guess what? It takes it takes ten to ten to twenty years to build a, a new mine. Oh wow. Yeah. So supply could be going it's down. It's not gonna happen fast. <laughs> this shit is not gonna it's not gonna be resolved quickly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hit the fan and it's gonna be that way for a long fucking time. It's gonna be there for five to ten years. U.S. is heading for a really tough time. Hey, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this episode. Are you ready to maximize your real estate investing to its full potential? Send an email to andrew at jarrettcapital.com and take your life and business to all new levels. That's andrew at j-a-r-r-e-t-t-capital.com. That's why I don't want to be there when the shit hits the fan. You know, speaking of, I was going to ask you this. Uh, I feel I know what you're going to say, but in the news, I think it was maybe a week or two ago. So JP Morgan's former gold trader was sentenced yeah. to two years for fraud, 11 yes. charges for manipulating prices from 2008 to 2016. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they want to keep the price down or, and do you think they are manipulating that on purpose? Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, they don't want, the, the Fed does not want uh, competition. They know people like us own gold and we're their enemy. Right. <laughs> so they want us to be broke, poor, despondent, depressed. They don't want us to be bullish. They want us to keep us down. They want to keep the, the thumb on us, right? Mm -hmm. But there's record all-time central bank purchases of gold. Why do you think the prices push down low? The the, oh. the 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 answer is so they can buy more, right? Right, reduce cost. at cheaper price. Mm -hmm. If somebody's selling because they give up, they throw in the towel. They're into sweep up and and buy at super cheap price. Yep. 
they don't want to pay market prices. They want to pay artificially low price for gold because they know they're arsonists. They made the fire and they smell it and they know it's coming. Right. So they know in advance, shit, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. with that, a lot of the, what I've seen, BRICS nations now are buying gold like crazy. Yeah. Oh, record track, record purchases. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it like a new reserve currency or what do you think the likelihood of that? All is? the gold is heading to the East, Asia, the, the Middle East. It's mm -hmm. all heading East. Where are the highest IQ levels are? If you know this, by the way, you know, you understand that it, the higher the IQ, the better decision making as a whole. <laughs> right? right. So the two top, the two top uh, IQ in the world is Japan and China. Hmm. Now, a lot of people think that J J China and Japan are in trouble because they have declining birth uh, rates, but that can be easily changed at some point in the future. Um, if they and they don't, they haven't. OK, so. They're keeping their cards to their chest. They haven't really disclosed truthfully how much gold they have. Right. If they did, it would shoot the price up almost instantly because they'd be like, oh, shit. It's kind of like the scenario when uh, Walt Disney was buying all the land up in Florida. Mm -hmm. He did it in secret because if he did it in public, <laughs> everybody would shoot the price up because Walt Disney is buying. Yep. So the BRIC nations are, are working together. They're not necessarily going to have a currency for gold, but what they're doing is they'll trade with one another. And if there's a, if, if country A has uh, more trade with, uh, they import more and there's a balance, then they'll pay the difference in gold. Hmm. Okay. And so they'll trade with one another and they'll settle in gold. And, cut out and they want to keep it in physical. They want to own the. They want to keep the physical gold, not in London anymore, not in New York. They want their own gold stored in their own countries for a reason, because uh, London and New York stole Venezuela's gold, and they refused, and they stole Russia's assets as well. Hmm. So nobody trusts the West anymore. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's why the dollar's in, in trouble because of the sanctions and the lack of trust and the weaponization of sanctions. Because they're using sanctions as a weapon, as a as a, a war tool. They really they stole private people's uh, money and and mm -hmm. assets, boats and shit. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Whether whether you agree or disagree about the Russians, it can happen to you. Right. You want the government to do that to you? Absolutely fucking not. Well, the US, so why would you? Why would you be for asset seizure? They did that back in one. What I don't remember the year, but uh, Cyprus gold uh, confiscation. Oh, Nineteen. They did that to bank accounts in Cyprus as well. It's called a bail-in. Yeah. Anything over two. Which is what's going to happen to the United States at some point? Mm -hmm. They'll they'll dip into your bank account and take what they want. Yeah, anything over the FD, FDIC insured limit, right? They can grab. FDIC is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it doesn't even cover a fraction of the deposits. That is true. Yeah, that is true. That's bullshit. <laughs> I guess, what do you see the timeline for the dollar possibly being replaced as a reserve currency? Uh, it could take a decade. It could, it could take up to a decade. It's a very slow process. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount of dollars in circulation, it's going to be very difficult to switch it overnight. Yeah. Unless there's a catastrophe in the United States. Do you think it'll go to a digital currency or we'll still have cash? No, they'll try to, um, uh, but there'll be resistance to it. Mm -hmm. Whether they do it or not depends on how successful they, they do the trial run uh, with the, the, the Fed now payment system. I don't think it will work out. We'll see. Hopefully they're damaged. So the Fed has damaged so much in the crash that uh, that they end up uh, scrapping the idea, or there's enough backlash. So mm -hmm. I hope I have some hope. But if not, move to a country where they don't have a digital currency. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I guess when you see the crash coming, what's your timeline for it, or do you you know you think it's <laughs> imminent? At I, this used point, to, I used to do timelines. <laughs> I don't do timelines anymore. Yeah. Because I've been wrong so much on time. I'm right on. The inevitability, we're, at, we're past the event horizon for a crash, mm -hmm. is inevitable. 
It's basically like we're heading towards a black hole. We're going to get sucked in. We just don't know when. Right. <laughs> and yeah. you can't you can't escape it. You think they're going to keep raising rates? One more time, maybe two. You think so? Till till something breaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once hmm. something breaks, they'll reverse course to save the stock market, but it'll be too late. Once you start cutting rates, it can't be saved. Yeah, they cut very quickly, usually. Yeah, the last time yeah. they cut rates and um, it did not stop the halt of the the, the market crashing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So I guess multifamily, we have a lot of multifamily listeners. The, the thing is, you know, survive till 25. Uh, do you think rates will start no. to lower in 24 or no. I mean, what do you no. think what do you think is going to happen rates will continue to rates will never mortgage rates will never come down from whether where they are not for a decade right. or more no hmm. why do you think that it's not the, what i think it's because there's no there's not going to be any buyers for u.s debt or u.s mortgage-backed securities because the more the the credit rating just got downgraded recently yeah. From AAA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, you know, people, you know, if you get your data from a, from a, a commercial real estate brokerage, that's a conflict of interest. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's like going to the barber <laughs> and asking if you need a haircut. Yeah, Where exactly. Both of us don't need one, man. You know, right, yeah. need a haircut, same barber, but, right? <laughs> yeah, same one. Multifamily is in trouble. Multifamily guys need to understand that your tenant base is going to shrink and unemployment is going to rise. Interest rates aren't going to come down to where you think they are. Inflation isn't going to come down. Um, you'll have a second and third wave of inflation that will be either greater or equal to what the inflation was before. Hmm. Um, oil is back at not, almost uh, $90 a barrel. That's not going to come back down. Um, oil could go to $150, $200 a barrel like that. The reason is, is because of lack of investment, lack of ex uh, investment in exploration, and lack of will from uh, companies, the big companies, to uh, they, they want to be green. <laughs> but green <laughs> energy is bullshit right now um, okay. because windmills run off of diesel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're cut yeah. in Scotland. In Scotland, they cut down 16 million trees. To build a windmill farm. Wow. That's how is that That's green? Backwards, right? Yeah. And they run <laughs> on diesel half the time. That's crazy. And they freeze and they need to be they, they need, need to change oil, the oil right? every five hundred dollars. Right. Fuck it's stupid. No sense. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. not green. And and guess what? The, the 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 blades can't be recycled. They're full of heavy metals and they're full of toxic chemicals. Wow. They're putting in a, in a landfill. Mm-hmm. People are nuts. Nuclear power is the way to go. Uranium. There's no emissions. Zero emissions. Mm -hmm. And carbon is not a bad thing. Carbon is what plants need to grow. Right. It, by the way, I'll tell you a cool statistic. The world is the greenest it's ever been. Hmm. And, and it's produced the most food it's ever produced because of carbon. Awesome. Farmers... And greenhouses add carbon to the atmosphere so the plants grow faster and bigger. Hmm. Man, pretty... Uh, <laughs> pretty Going back to multifamily, because that's... <laughs> we did a nuclear there. Multifamily. I have heard nuclear is the way to go, though, real quick. The only thing I know is people are, like, scared of it, you know, like, contamination and things like that is the main... They can completely recycle nuclear waste now. Right. And it's so safe. Um, a bomb can hit it. Uh, a tsunami can now, they, they're now building nuclear power plants that can withstand tsunamis, earthquakes. So a lot of the things that happened in Fukushima will not happen again. Mm -hmm. Technology has improved since then. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess with all this uh, being said here, what are you most excited about in the future here? Oh, man. Um, my favorite asset class within mining is uh, platinum because it's, platinum is used for hydrogen energy. Hydrogen is zero emissions. It's uh, it, it, there's two things that are produced with um, with a fuel cell: 
oxygen and hydrogen. And guess what? You can power your car with water. You can fuel it with water. Mm -hmm. And that water produces hydrogen, which is used for fuel. Hmm. So that's my favorite, that's my favorite investment, hydrogen and, and uh, platinum. Because platinum is needed in the fuel cell. A fuel cell is platinum plates pushed together and the water goes through and it's a, there's electric uh, current added and then, then um, oxygen and hydrogen is made and they already they already have a completely um, self uh, like a, for example uh, in South Africa they have a, a mining truck which are huge huge fucking vehicles that runs mm -hmm. completely off of hydrogen right. they have wow. semi trucks that run off of hydrogen hmm you think that'll take over the electric cars eventually? trains cars trains ships machinery factories um even airplanes at some point will run off of hydrogen hmm. and replace all the like tesla and everything you think would be switched tesla out. tesla is garbage it's a garbage stock it's riddled with fraud it's riddled with accounting fraud um tesla is probably the worst stock you can it's enron times 10. <laughs> wow I, speaking of, I think he actually didn't Elon just sell off all his Bitcoin. I heard right at a loss or something. I don't follow him anymore because he makes me mad. Yeah. He's a grifter. Uh, you know, he bought Twitter to be able to change his image to be this free speech guy, uh, and and so I don't. You know, I, it's going to piss off people. So I don't want to go down that that road. Mm. All I'll say is that Elon Musk is not a genuine good or ethical person. He is probably one of the worst um, grifters since Bernie Madoff. And I've got, I've got data to back that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I'm not a fan. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Okay. Going back to uh, when you were 23, I believe is when you said you went out to work for yourself. I guess what was the kind of like fork in the road moment or what made you realize you know, that's the way to go. And then, and then how'd that, you know, play out? Uh, well, I always knew I wanted to be my own boss, even when I was in high school. Um, it was, a, it was like a fire inside me. So mm -hmm. I always knew it. I always knew it, even as a kid that I, that's what I wanted. Finally got the chance. I read, uh, Robert, Robert Kiyosaki books changed my life, yep. gave me the trajectory to move and the confidence and the ability to do what I needed to do. Um, after I made my first uh, six figure year in real estate, that was the turning point where I knew I was never going back. <laughs> yeah. And so at that point, I realized that um, I was doing now, I started in wholesaling, then I went to rehabbing, then I started building a rental portfolio, I realized I didn't like any of those <laughs> and I went to the lending side and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I quickly trajectory, like my trajectory went, I did it basically everything in real estate, multifamily investing. Um, and I, and I love pa investing passively in deals, but I'm not investing in multifamily right now. Mm -hmm. It's too risky for me. There's not enough reward for the risk. The risk is more and the reward is tiny as a mm -hmm. fraction. Cap rates are nowhere near good enough. But the market conditions is the, is the problem. The market conditions aren't improving. They're getting worse. Yeah. And if you find people that are doing multifamily deals right now, they're pushing people, you know, they're marginal deals on people to make fee income off of their deals and broker fees. And no, no, thank you. I'm not risking mine. We have, we have a, a huge database of uh, passive investors. I'm not risking one penny of their money in multifamily right now right. i respect them too much their money i act as if their money is my money i would not mm -hmm. put any risk like no even in good markets like in texas um it's not the right environment there's yeah. too much shit that can go wrong mm -hmm. and and like for example look at the guy who um who lost all those units to yeah, in exactly. texas mm -hmm. you know Yep. So he lost, he lost so much money for his investors. 
Right. And he was fought, he was in a he was in a an official um in, uh, investment group in Texas. Mm-hmm. Yep. Learning from the experts. Right. So no. He doing lost, crazy. Then I heard he also lost a massive earnest money deposit on another deal. Yeah. So not to scare people. Are there good are there deals that are doable, possibly? Would I do it? Would I roll the dice to try to Okay, you've got all these chips, right? You've you've won all the chips at Vegas. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go put the chips back on the table for one last roll of the dice? No. Yeah. Take your chips and, and store cash. Keep the cash and wait for opportunities to come to you. Don't run after opportunities. Let them come to you. So if this resonates to you, like, wait, wait. Don't do stupid shit with your money. You've worked too hard for it to mm-hmm. risk it when there's shit about, I mean, there's always crazy shit that happens before an election year. True. And next year we have massive amounts of bridge debt and multifamily coming due. You no, know, there's trillions of dollars that need to be refinanced mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at higher rates. higher rates. And the rates aren't coming down. The rates aren't coming down. And a lot of people are gambled with floating rate debt. No, sir. Yep. You'll be able to pick that up. You'll be, if you wait, You'll be able to pick up all those deals in about a year or two, maybe even three. But guess what? I still, I still need to see market conditions in two years from now. I think, honestly, I think we're head. The United States can turn into USSR like that. Hmm. It's such on a knife edge that the institutions, people do not trust anything in the United States anymore. Um, it's all a Ponzi scheme. Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. The banking system is a Ponzi scheme. Insurance is a Ponzi scheme. Um, there's state and local governments that, that are going to need bailed out. Um, Pensions. <laughs> everybody's going to need to bail out when this comes. The Fed is going to have to print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So what? how do you protect yourself? Gold, silver, platinum. That, that sure, phys, physical metals are insurance policy. They are not... An investment. They are insurance against financial catastrophe. Mm-hmm. How you make money is you buy the producers. If a gold, if gold, for example, is at nineteen hundred an ounce today, and it goes to six thousand dollars an ounce in a year or two or three, the, they have semi-fixed costs, and then they have all this upside. You're going to make so much. They're going to make so much cash flow. The valuation is going to go through the roof. Yeah. And guess what? There's not enough shares available to the general public. So the influx of capital is going to shoot the, sh- the stock price through the moon. Like it's just, it's such a tiny sector. I mean, the uranium sector is, is 890 million. Wow. That, the entire uranium market. Man. And Man. guess what? Uranium, which is needed to build nuclear power plants, Forty percent of all the uranium that's processed is done in Russia, so all that uranium is off the market to the United States and the West. Wow. So what does that do to? When supply goes down and demand goes up, it yep. pushes the price up. So so guess what? Uranium is about you know fifty five sixty dollars a pound. It's going to go to 100, 150, 200. I don't know. All yeah. I know is it's going to go up. And guess what? How else are you going to make money? I mean, right now, you have to hope. Like in 2008, I know so many guys who were just flippers and they went bankrupt because that's all they had. They had one, they, had, they were a one trick pony. They had one fishing rod in the water. <laughs> and when, and when, when it's not biting, you go hungry. Right. So you need multiple fishing poles in the water, right? So yep. that if one of them gets, you're going to, you're going to feed your family, you know, for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Seven stream has been coming. So you cannot underestimate what's coming. Uh, and, and this is a, like a, they patched over 2008. There was nothing done to repair the damage. They put a bandaid over a, an open wound mm-hmm. and it's just got gangrene now. It got worse. Is it possible you think to patch it again and just keep kicking it down the road? The amount 
okay, the amount of stimulus needed to to plug the it's basically think of this analogy. There's a piece of bubble gum on a hole in a dam, and that pressure is building and building and building. Mm -hmm. The Fed is trying to put pieces of gum <laughs> on that hole, yeah, and it's getting bigger and bigger. And the mm -hmm. how much can you patch before something becomes unpatchable? Yeah, I mean, fiat currency always ends, so is your place, right? Correct, and that's why they're trying to come up with the Fed now digital currency bullshit to be an alternative to the dollar, a digital dollar, which is complete bullshit. They just want to spy on you. They want to take away, uh, they want to control what you can spend. They want to um, force you to spend. They actually said that you can't have savings. You have to have, you have to basically spend what you receive hmm. or you lose it. They put a time limit on your money. That, that's what's going to happen. That's going to create more inflation right there. If you have to spend it, right? More in the system. The velocity of money will increase. Yep. The turning of the money. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the velocity of money is down because <laughs> the banks are not lending it out. And that's causing a liquidity crisis. So guess what? 2008 is going to be repeat. Your credit card is going to get canceled. Your line of credit is going to get canceled. You won't be able to borrow uh, emergency funds um, if something happens in your business. Um, sorry to be so doom and gloom, but I don't sugarcoat shit. I, you know, I tell you it straight. I tell you what is probable and not fairy dust. You know, Fugazi. Yeah, Fugazi. <laughs> yeah. I don't deal in Fugazi. I deal in <laughs> this is. This is the most probable outcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's guys out there that are like, yeah, real estate's going to be great again. Just wait a couple of years. And tell me if you got that, if you heard that from a broker, if you heard that from a real estate agent or a broker, of course. please do not listen to those <laughs> advi that advice, <Right>. please. <laughs> I, I like, okay, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I've studied economics for years and I basically have a PhD from uh, from doing years and years and years of reading and studying and reading charts. And so basically like I'm, I'm master Yoda at, at economics. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I could, you know, I've got a huge bullshit detector. If somebody is trying to bullshit people with charts and cherry picking data, I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. That's good. We need somebody like that. I would rather somebody get defensive, keep what they make, protect what they've got and then you know put the drawbridge up on your castle until the war is over yeah. then put the drawbridge down when it's safe and go out mm -hmm. and go explore yeah yep that's my that's my that's my thoughts on that i like it well i got it's too it's too, it's too much it's too much risk for reward in real estate specifically now mm -hmm. On the other side, mining stocks, have been, they're the worst they've been in 40 to 50 years. So that to me means that if you look at the last bull market, well, someone will say, well, gold's not did anything. Well, I'm sorry. In 2001, gold was 250 an ounce. <laughs> in 2011, it was 1,900 an ounce. Mm -hmm. 250 to 1,900 in 10 years. Yeah. That's, that's a good move, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Old miners made 17 times your money. Yeah. So if you'd invested a hundred grand, you'd ended up with $1.7 million for mm -hmm. every hundred grand you invested. Yeah. Pretty good return. For every, for every hundred <laughs> grand. Right. Okay. So, okay. And then these clowns, gold not did anything. It's a, it's a paperweight. The reason it's not did anything is the past 12 years, the fed printed money like it was uh you know, like it was candy and they just gave it away, gave it away, gave it away, give it to banks, bailing this company out, bailing this up. They, they, they printed so much money and they, they created the financial conditions that we have today. Everybody's punch drunk from the, the oversupply of cheap, easy money. That yeah. era is over and that will never return. The money, the easy money era is over. What worked in the past decade is not going to work in the next decade. 
that is why you need an alternative math. Interesting. So gold essentially has to be revalued is what you're saying, right? With all the new money supply. Listen to this. The the previous savings rate in history was 1.5%. It's, it's, it's 0.5%. To go back to what it used to be, gold would double or triple. Hmm. Wow. It's a 0.5% savings rate Yeah, for gold. And that's because of Bitcoin and Dogecoin and all these fucking shit coins and NFT. Everybody wants to be chasing the get rich quick shit. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that what's staring them in the face is this opportunity. Wow. If you could, I guess, if you had one takeaway for the audience to absorb from this show, what would that be? Like, what's what's your main takeaway? Protect yourself now while you still have time. Mm-hmm. I've been doing. I've, I've been assembling a huge portfolio for three years now, and I've been helping. I have a. I have a group of 20 guys that I help there. I, I help with their, I, I give them education. I tell them what I'm doing and they follow me. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial professional. They follow me because they know I'm not telling them bullshit. And um, they, they love me to death. They trust me and uh, they like what I'm saying and they understand what I'm saying. It makes sense to them. They already own physical gold and silver. They already understand what's happening, but they want a way to make money. So that's what I, I've been doing that for three years. And a lot of guys that I'm working with have been doing that with me. There's guys that have been with me for three years already. Hmm. Um, so my group is only three years old. Um, hmm. But I'll tell you this. Even if you have six months to prepare, it's better than nothing. True. Sure. That's true. I don't even think we have six months. We might have. I'm not given a timeline, unfortunately. <laughs> we have limited. There's a there's a window. Okay. It's here's an analogy for people. the The train is in the station, right? Right. Go get yourself a ticket. Get on the train and wait while yeah. wait while the train is in the station. Mm-hmm. Don't try to try try to catch the train as it's leaving because it's going to leave your ass behind and yeah. it'll be too late. I'd rather be <laughs> early to the party than have a locked door and everybody's gone. <laughs> yeah. Get on the train, find a nice seat and relax. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I, it's better to be early than to be late. And yeah. I never chase price. I, if, if you're trying to chase as it goes up, you're that FOMO trading is not the way to make money. Exactly. I'm not a day trader. I don't gamble. Mm-hmm. I'm a value investor and contrarian. Okay. And yeah, like I said, I've, I've known, you for a long time now and we're always chatting back and forth on facebook so yep. uh andrew does have a special link uh for his natural resources group for those 20 people he helps out so if anyone's interested in finding out more about that just you know reach out to me andrew at jaredcampbell.com and i can get you the link and uh, get you in touch but Ooh, sounds good i mean J- andrew you're the man to go to man you're the go-to man um you're uh, a wealth of knowledge People should reach out to you anyway for your wealth of experience and your real estate background, your investing background, um, your mentorship and guidance, because you can really provide people a lot of help, especially, you know, in this kind of period of time where it's dicey, you know? Right. Yep. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. And then how, how do people reach out to you on Facebook or other platforms uh, as well? So uh, my name, full name, Andrew McDonald's. M-C-D-A-N-N-E-L-S. You can find me on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Mining Investing Education, at Mining Investing Education. You can find me on YouTube. You just type my name on YouTube. Um, you can find me on Twitter and at Andrew McDonald's. Um, I have a Substack blog post. So you can find me on Substack. You just type in um, mining investing education. Um, you can also type in mining investing and mining investing education on uh, YouTube, and you'll find an alternative channel for me as well. Um, you can go to my website andrewmcdonalds.com. Um, if you want to um, read more about me there, go ahead. I have frequently asked questions on my website, 
So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, you can um, read more about me. If you are interested in the mining stuff that I just mentioned, uh, reach out to Andrew. He, um, he'll talk to you and then um, and basically explain in detail, um, in more detail than, uh, than we can do on this video. But uh, that's how you can get in touch. That's um, the places to find me. Um, I have a free group on Facebook. Um, it's uh, so you can you can join the free group on Facebook, and then uh, I've got my paid uh, portfolio um, advisory service, which uh, Andrew talked about. Yep, and I would definitely recommend you know following him on on all this stuff. He's I love when you put out your post. It's always really informative. So I love and my that. memes, right? You like, you <laughs> yeah, like those the memes, memes too, too, especially. Yeah. <laughs> you know how much, you know how much business I get from just posting memes. I see everybody commenting on them. So I know that you know, you know, people, wanna... people laugh their ass off and you know yeah. what? I only want to attract and work with people that are like-minded. So All everybody right. who's with me are either libertarian kind of background, anarcho-capitalist kind of guys, um, you know, Pure capitalists, not like, you know, mm -hmm. Marxist or anything, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so they're like-minded, they're business kind of guys. They think about, you know, the future, they're hardworking, they, they're they very successful. I work with like, uh, I'm friends and I've got such an amazing network. Like with one call, we can go buy a hundred unit uh, multifamily in cash. We, mm -hmm. you know, we can pull the trigger on huge deals. Um, we, you know, we, we can fund real estate deals as well in our, in our in-house team. Um, so yeah, if you, if you have a real estate deal that you need to fund, uh, reach out to Andrew and, uh, he'll, uh, he'll put you in touch with me. So, um, yeah. A anything else, man? I, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else. We talked so much. <laughs> no, I think, uh, now we just come to our, our five to thrive, the word association game. Cool. wrap it up <laughs> sounds good i'm looking forward to it all right so this is you know five words right in a row just give me the first word or phrase that comes to mind you just can't repeat your answer okay all right first one commodities valuable contrarian investing the way to go physical metals ultimate insurance Inflation. Horrific. <laughs> and natural resources, mining, and exploration stock investors. The way to make money in the next decade. Love it. Well, man, it was great having you on the show. Thanks so much for being here and wealth of knowledge. My pleasure. It's, it's honestly, um, Andrew, you're one of my favorite people, man. I like to talk to you. So for me, uh, I'm always smiling when I talk to you. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate this uh, opportunity to talk to your audience. And uh, I wish you nothing but uh, personal success, personal growth, and health, happiness, all these beautiful things. You deserve it. You're a hardworking person. And um, I, I, I've watched you grow over, over a period of time. And uh, you're doing really great things, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Likewise. Absolutely. My pleasure.